We are back. I'm your host, Brad. Join my co-host, Nick, here on The Joe Show. With us, we are joined with, by, excuse me, MFC lightweight champ fighting Luciano Azevedo, September 10th at MFC 26. Antonio McKee, what's going on? Uh, that man, I'm up here in the Antarctica Mountains training and throwing snowballs at the Eskimos. <laughs> up in the Antarctica, is that what you consider Canada? Yep, yep, yep. It's up here. It's nice and cold. I'm up here at the top. I'm butt naked. I'm practicing my Zen and martial arts. <laughs> what's the What's the temperature like up there, man? It's negative uh, fifty. <laughs> Come on, be real. It's like a hundred degrees where I'm at. There's no way it's that cold right now, even up in Canada. No, nah, man. Where I'm at, dude, it's, it's nothing but glaciers and ice, and it, it can't even snow. It's so cold up here. Uh, I had to go back to my my roots. <laughs> All right, man. Well. When I called you on the phone, you said, go ahead and bring El Negro in. You also have That's another. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, you said, go ahead and bring El Negro in. You also have another nickname, Mandingo. So which one do you like to go by, El Negro or Mandingo? In Canada, I'm El Negro. I told you that already. In Africa, I'm Mandingo. Okay, now, I was talking to a couple guys before we came on, and I was trying to find out which, what Mandingo meant, and... uh I didn't even know this, but apparently it's a porn actor. Uh, why did you – is is that what Mandingo is named after, or is it wow. another meeting? See, that's y'all gutter minds, man. El Negro – I mean, uh, Mandingo is a, a, a tribe in Africa that were some fierce warriors, right? So all my life I've been a warrior. And my great ancestors, they, uh, they collected the bones and skulls of their enemies as they ate them. So uh, naturally, it's just in my nature and it's in my DNA uh, to be a warrior. So I took up the name Mandingo from the tribe of Africa, uh, a bunch of great warriors. The British government helped slaughter a bunch of them, you know, uh, but they didn't bother nobody. They were really peaceful. In fact, they ran the Zulus up out of Africa to a certain extent. But uh, So I'm just trying to uh, bring back my ancestor's name. That's all. Okay, well, I hope I cleared that up for some people because apparently a lot of guys out there thought that it was after the black porn star. So that is not what Mandingo means. Let no, 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 no. But, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm very well endowed if they want to know that, too. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So that's, I, I, don't, I, I don't choose to preach on that, though. You know what I mean? That's for the, the ladies to find out. That's uh, a surprise. Speaking of that, man, we might as well go ahead and jump into this. I wasn't going to even bring this up, but since we're talking about the ladies, um, in one of your interviews, you pretty much said, you know, don't have sex before a fight. I had a, I had sex four hours before one of my fights, and my legs were gone. Are you the ladies' man? Man, you know what? I was, I was going through some emotional stuff at that time, and so, you know, I've always carried this sex demon on my shoulders. And, you know, my wife enticed me to uh, have sex with her before a fight against Carl Pratter. And, you know, I came out the first round on Carl Pratter real strong, busted him up, cut his eye open, and I was for sure I was going to finish him in the second round. Unfortunately, by me uh, having intimacy with my wife, man, my legs were done. You know, you never seen McKee stuck on the ground and couldn't finish a shot, but I couldn't finish that shot. And I knew I had been having sex, so I tried to stay safe and not get caught because it's, I would have got hit in the chin, but I would have fell down. It really does make a difference. I know a lot of people say they've done research and it doesn't make a difference. But let me tell you something. Four hours before a fight, it makes a difference. Your legs were there, just not – my legs weren't there. You know, and I was, I was just – I felt real heavy. So maybe if you do do it, you might not want to, you know, ejaculate. But <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I no. couldn't resist, man. I hear you. Now you're saying – uh, a lot of people have done research on this. I don't, I don't know, man, but this just seems like something that you have to learn from personal experience. I don't really think that you can research this topic and find out uh, how tired you're going to get if you have sex before a fight because, you know, a lot of people are different. Well, you got to remember, too, I was, I was training really hard for that fight. That was supposed to be a five-five-round fight. And by no means, if I had to go another ten minutes in that fight, man, it would have been a serious ugly fight, you know. Um, so I, I guess you're right. It depends. But I'm a very sexually active person, you know. Uh, so, you know, it, it may be a little different for me because that's how my body releases stress. And that definitely was a day of stress for me. All right, man. Well, this is a weird topic we're getting on. I don't even know how we got on this. Oh, yeah, the nickname, Mandingo. Uh, and that's not what it means, by the way. Go ahead and say that again. All right, you're fighting yeah. – 
Luciano, <laughs> I, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, as a veto. Um, I couldn't really find a whole lot of video on this guy, but y'all been doing some smack talking coming into this. You're saying that you're going to retire if you don't finish this guy. So Okay, let, let me clear this up what I said. I said this because, you know, at this level of MMA, it's not it's not hard. I mean, it's not that easy to just finish tough fighters. Like somebody trying to finish me, that's biting off more than you can chew. What I said to set the record straight, and I said this on HDNet, I said that if this fight is a boring fight or it goes to a decision and the, 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 uh, uh, the fans are not entertained by this fight, that I would definitely retire. But I honestly don't feel like Alzevedo is even on the same page as me. It's almost as an insult for him to even think that he could even be in the same room or ring with me. Unfortunately, you know, Mark Tavlis just does what he has to do to, to get these guys in there to fight me, and he's probably one of the highly decorated uh, officers of the sport, I should say. But unfortunately, I'm on a, I'm on a path of uh, destruction, man. You know, uh, my last opponent I finished in two minutes. I've been working really hard with the guys at the body shop, Jason Hyre. Uh, Jesse Juarez and Musa Tolliver and Vince Ortiz. These guys are really pushing me and kicking my ass every day. And, they, you know, I'm an old man. And he said some things that really offended me. And I really appreciate that because that's bringing the nigga out of me. You know what I mean? So El Negro ain't just coming in in, in, in El Negro fashion, but I'm bringing the nigga out of me too. So I hope people don't be offended by that word, nigga. But like I said, that's a that's a term of uh, loyalty and endearment for me coming from where I come from. It's definitely not a racial slur. So. Okay, so those comments that you made about the, your career after this fight, it didn't have anything to do with you just needing, like, uh, it, it's nothing about you changing your game up. It's pretty much just you stating that you don't think this guy even deserves to be in the same ring as you. Yeah, well, you know, I don't say that in disrespect to Mark Pavlis because I think the Pavlis family they run a very strong organization with MSC, and I'm greatly appreciative of them giving me the opportunity to come over and showcase my skills when a lot of promoters ran from me because they knew I'd be a hard person to beat and most definitely a hard person to match up uh, in the fight game. But nevertheless, um, you know, just... Just the styles. I mean, I, I don't see what he can do to me that, that I haven't endured already. And I fought some tough guys at a higher weight class. And 55 is more like my natural weight. I just don't know what he can bring to the table that I haven't seen as long as I go in there to take care of business. And I just don't believe that uh, it's going to go five fives. I, I can't imagine fighting this guy five five-minute rounds. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to try to get his ass out of there in one or two. Okay, now, we're talking about this guy just really not being on the same level as you, and I don't think that's even really debatable. I mean, you're a guy, you've been around for a long time, 24-3-2, and two, record speaks for itself, you dominate people, but you're over in the MFC, and I'm not going to say that they're a very small organization. I mean, they have the deal on HDNet, so they're somewhat big. They're kind of like a, a mid-tier organization, I, I would say. They're obviously not on the level of a UFC or strike force, but they're definitely above of the lower guys, like they're making their way up. Do you oh, think? Right. Do you think that even though they're making their way up, that they're they're just having problems finding guys for you to fight that are legitimate because all of the bigger names are in these other organizations, and you're kind of stuck in a position to where you you know have to take these fights because. Like, there's nobody better out there for you to fight? Or, like, what's the deal? You think the MFC could turn out some better guys for you to get in there with? Well, you know, I, 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 I personally don't think it's about what the MFC is doing. I think it's about the fighters themselves that feel that they have the qualities and the skills and the record to actually step in there and fight with me. You know, I've never took an easy fight. I've always asked for the top fights. Um, and as far as the UFC, you know, I, I so much think I don't. I don't necessarily believe that the MSC is not at that level as far as fighters. I believe that the the UFC is actually established itself so well. So whoever fights in the UFC actually rides on the coattail and level of the UFC. Where I'm a little bit different. I'm on the coattail of my own fighting level, and it does, I don't need an organization to make me. Uh, a tough fighter. I'm a tough fighter no matter where I fight, when I fight. So, you know, um, I mean, you know, due to heavy politics and, you know, I've, like I say, you know, strike force and UFC, those are, those, they've got their guys and they've got their boys and they've got their friends and they've got their little commitment. But me, I'm coming in there to smash that ass. I don't care 
who's your boy, who's not your boy. I'm coming to whoop your ass and walk out of there with the win. And uh, that's just the way it is. Like, you know, I look at the top guys, BJ Penn and Josh Thompson and, 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 and uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Mendez and Strikeforce. I mean, come on, dude, I would, I would smash those guys. Let's be real. The only fight really for me is a guy like BJ, is a guy like uh, Fitch, somebody that's really technical on the ground. Forrest, Florian, all those guys, Joe Stevens, man, I'd I, I, I wax that ass. And they know it. You know, the, the promoters know it. And they're like, well, we don't really want McKee as a champion because we just don't like his style of fighting. And, and, and again, I, you know, I, I respect what the promoters say because I know their job is to fill up the seats. But my job is to kick your ass at the to listen to the rest of the 45-minute interview with Antonio McKee, go to www.joshowradio.com or click the link below.